Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity top down shooter tutorial series. Okay, so we set up uh, being able to use um, our controller input as well as our looking around at our mouse, but now we want to be able to actually switch between the two of those things because at the moment we have it set up, we have um, our bool value that can determine hey, we can use our controller, or we could obviously you couldn't do this in the game or anything if we go and turn that off. Then we're able to look around with the mouse like this. So that's all fine and dandy, but we want to be able to switch through, de to, through them on the fly because sometimes people like to do things differently and weird. And um, basically, you always want to be prepared for someone doing something strange with your game, basically. Um, so, what we're going to do is add a simple little thing to be able to switch between those two things on the fly. So, to do that, we're going to create a new script down here that we'll call a new C sharp script that we'll call. Um, detect control methods and we're going to attach this to our player here just before we go and give him any uh, before we go and write the script itself we just attach it here so it'll be all nicely set up for us so I'm just going to click and drag it over here there we go and then we're going to open it up in mono develop and basically all we're going to do in this is just detect whether there's any input coming from either the mouse or the controller and use that to set our bool value on our player. So, if we're going to want to set the bool value on our player, uh, we've got some strange errors for some reason. Uh, I'll just close that and reopen it. Sometimes Mono Develop uh, has these weird issues where it does stuff for no reason. But obviously, a new script doesn't actually have any errors in it. So yeah. Uh, okay, so we're just going to make a reference to the player so that we're able to control whether that uh, use controller value is true or false. So we're going to add a public player controller that we'll just call the player as we make reference to that. Uh, and we could add that in the start function, but for now we'll just leave it so we can just drag and drop it into the slot. So we'll just leave the start function alone. And then down in update here, we're going to start checking for some input. So I'm just going to add a little comment here to say that we're going to detect mouse input here. So the first thing we want to do is basically just check if any of the mouse buttons have been clicked. And if the mouse buttons have been clicked, then the, we know that the player should be using the mouse and then the mouse should be active. So we're going to add an if statement here and say if input.getMouseButton0. So if there's any action on the left click, then something will happen. Uh, or that we'll do something basically. But obviously the player could right click or middle click the mouse button. So let's just cover those. Um, possibilities too. So we'll have, so we say or, which is our two little bars up like that. So or, so if we were checking to see if there's a left click or if there's an input dot get mouse button for one for the right click or input dot get mouse button uh, two for the middle click. So we'll put another bracket to close that. And basically all we want to do then is say, okay, if we have any of these inputs happening, then the player dot use controller, which is our value to determine whether using a controller, should be false. So let's just test that out and make sure it's working. We'll save that. We'll pop back into Unity. Let it compile for a second. And we'll go to our player. We want to make sure that our player slot here is hooked up so we didn't we didn't automatically assign it so it won't magically find it when we start the game so what we can do here is just drag our player into the slot and because the player controller script is already attached to our player it knows to fill that in there okay so we'll hit play and at the moment we have a default into use the controller we can see in the bottom right there so I can use my controller to look around like that but if I were to click now now we can see that I'm able to shoot to my heart's content. Um, but on a right stick, you can hear me moving around there, uh, won't do anything. So, we know that our switching is working. But before we move on to doing our controller, let's do another little bit of mouse checking here. What we're going to do is check and basically if the player moves the mouse at all. So if the player moves the mouse any little bit, then it'll switch over to mouse control. because. If you're using a controller, obviously your mouse shouldn't be moving it at any time. Um, again, these are just different options for doing this. You might not want to have your player be detecting um, mouse movement um, for 
other reasons but what we're going to do is get the input that gets is raw of mouse x so mouse x is just whatever way the mouse is moving along the x-axis so if the mouse is moving side to side at all then what we're going to say is if that is not equal to 0, 0.0 f so basically if there's no movement if or if there isn't no movement on the mouse x-axis so we're just checking to see if there's any movement happening left and right or input that get access raw on the mouse y axis again we're checking if that is not equal to 0, 0.0 f like that uh, not, not a semicolon we need to close a bracket uh, so basically what we're checking is if there's any movement either left or right or up and down then what we want to do is again just say the player that use controller is equal to uh, not true false okay so we'll save that and we'll go back in again here and again we always want to check and make sure that any of these things are working so i'm going to hit play here and we'll start off by moving around with the controller Yep, that's all fine. And if we now we can see we just moved the mouse into the frame and immediately it started following the mouse just like it should. So perfect. So we have it it knows now how to switch to the mouse whenever it wants. But what about switching back to the controller? Well, we have two ways of checking for the controller. So I'm just gonna add a little comment here to say detect controller input. Now, we could detect for any kind of controller input using the left stick, um, but maybe we want to give our players the option of they can move around with the left stick because we know that works by default, and they could also move around with the or shoot around with the mouse if they want to. Sometimes, pe again, people like to have different control setups for different things. So we don't want to limit it to if it detects the left stick. Uh, it automatically should default to the controller but if it detects the right stick then we know that we're definitely using the right stick to aim at things so we should use that to switch to the controller so what we'll do is basically almost the same as what we did with the for the mouse axis here we'll just say if input dot get access raw but this time we're going to use the right horizontal that we set up in the previous video and again, we're going to check if that is not equal to zero or the on the input that oh no, we've got a bit of type in there. Input that get access raw on the right vertical. And we'll check that is not equal to 0, 0.0 F. And then so what we want to do in that situation is say the player that use controller is equal to uh, true because in that situation our controller is now active and we want to use that so let's go back in and test that so let it compile got a bit of an error there for some reason let's go back in here oh it's because it's it should be mouse space Y just there. So it was still getting activated because we were moving around in the X axis. It would be very weird that your mouse would move exactly in the Y axis. So you could actually really technically just shorten this down to input that access raw mouse X, but we want to cover all our bases. But typically it would be, most people would never move directly. If they're moving up, they would never move directly zero left or right because you always kind of move a little bit um but okay so that's fine uh that error is just there still for the moment um now we need to run our game and we're going to check switching between the two methods so we start out moving with our controller like this if we move our mouse it'll follow around perfectly and then if i start moving the right stick again now we have back to controller input so perfect we're able to switch between both of the things like we want but we want to do one extra little thing to switch controller input what if our player just pressed a button on the controller rather than start moving the right stick what if it, he already had a perfectly lined up shot and he just wanted to use the controller to shoot with the right stick 
So what we could do then, or not with the right stick, with the right bumper button. So what we'll do is basically just check and see is there any input being activated on the controller. So we'll say if input dot get um, key and we'll say key code. So this is much like what we did if we just have a look back at our player controller here. So here we checked for joystick button five to check if the gun, so we can set if the gun was firing or not. So we're going to do something very similar here. We're going to say key code dot joystick. Oh, hold on. It's annoying sometimes when it doesn't auto populate the the line that you want. Oh, because I typed in key code rather than key code. That's probably why that was happening. Okay, so we've got input the get key and joystick button zero. And what we actually kind of want to do is just set this up to loop through. That should be a capital C as well. Um, set this up to loop through if it's checking for any button being pressed on the controller. So basically all we'll do is add a little or here. So it'll be input the get key, check for button zero, which I think is the A button. I can't remember off the top of my head now, but... Um, doesn't really matter too much we're gonna have we have 10 buttons basically on a Xbox controller when you're using the true Windows if you're using true Mac I think it goes up to 19 because it starts at 10 and um, so we're we're but we're only focusing on Windows for now if you're using Mac or you want to or if you want to support Mac you will need to add uh, more values in here but what we're going to do is just paste a whole load of these in here I think that should be enough and we'll just go through the numbers, pushing them up as we go. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, we need one more. And we'll make this 10. And then remove that final OR there. And we'll just add a little bracket to close it. So then all we're doing there is checking to see if there's any input from any uh, joystick button. And, oh, um. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. I was just thinking for a second there. Um, um, we're checking for any input, and what we want to do is add then down here again the player dot use controller equals true. So we we'll save that. Pop back into the game here. Let that compile, and then we we'll hit play. And now we should see, okay, so the player follows our, our mouse around and I just started using the right button to fire our gun. And now we can use the right stick just the way we want to. So there we go. We're taking input from all of our, from our buttons and being able to switch between. So if I actually just go and look at the player here for a second, so we can see our use controller here. So at the moment it's set not to. If I just click a random button on our controller, it'll switch to using the controller then we can switch back to using the mouse i can move around with the left stick here and shoot at the same time with the mouse or we can ignore it and go back to just shooting with our controller so there you go we're able to set up some different situations for handling our game and some different situations for handling input within our game uh, it, we're going to come back soon with some more tutorial goodness in this series. We're going to have to start adding some enemies, start adding some challenges, some points and stuff like that to our game. So that's what we're going to take a look at in the next few episodes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Thanks for watching this episode and if you want to learn more about developing your own games, you can follow the link on screen to my complete 2D platformer game development course on Udemy, where you will learn how to program and build a complete game in Unity 2D with multiple levels, enemies and unique boss battles. So click the link on screen or in the description below and get the course today.